Recording this here. I think we just started. How is the uh, hmm. weather out there where you guys are? I know it's uh, everyone says it's been kind of gross. It's raining right now, but then like the sun is shining bright. So I mean, I mean, you know what it is, Ontario. Yeah. <laughs> thunderstorms in the morning sunny and hot in the at lunchtime and then full snowstorm at 6 p.m so i have yeah. no idea yeah no absolutely <laughs> it's uh, it's uh strange well here it snowed a bit last night but it's like just turned into a sheet of ice out there is it that's gross. gross yeah yeah so, that is gross. I don't know what the morning commute is going to be like for many not very fun that's for sure right <laughs> <laughs> so well so did anyone, uh, you know, uh, send any of their calls or anything like that? Or everyone's still shy? Uh, everyone's still shy. For the most okay, part. okay. Uh, it, uh, yeah, I have one person, but I didn't ask him because he's going on our webinar. Like he, he wanted me to listen to his calls, but it was disassociated. So I don't want to pull those calls on here just to critique because I know he's also not on here. Okay, okay. Um, but I could ask him as well um, later today if if we could use his account and if he jumps in even next time as well. Yeah. Um, just with respect to, and it's just more of like guiding and critiquing the calls, right? So, 100%. And you know this person here, he he, what was he was really great at was he actually took the time he he introduced himself. He actually paused, right? So he would pause to let the person respond. Where a lot of us do get excited or anxious and nervous that we kind of forget to pause and let the person answer the phone properly, yeah. right? We're just so anxious to like kind of say what we have to say. Um, yeah. So that he did really well. Um, and I think where his biggest struggle is, is kind of taking it from that, that initial interaction to now just, okay, let's just have a normal conversation. It would kind of went into a soft introduction to almost like interrogation as to what they were looking for. Right. So there was no kind of like friendliness to it. It was just very uh, strategic in the sense of what are you looking for? What's your timeline? You know, things like, you know, the, the info grabbing stuff, not the relationship yeah. building. Right. So. Um, that's where his, you know, but aside from that, you know, people were answering, he gets a lot of people in, he's doing a uh, fair decent, like a decent amount um, spend for, for a solo agent and he's keeping up and he's talking to most of these people, but it's just, he's having a hard time converting. And I think that's part of what it is, is like, you know, we're getting the information, we're maybe not getting the right information, um, but also we're not keeping these people on the phone long enough. We're not having realistic conversations with them um, because all the calls, like, even though he's talking to them are about two to three minutes max. Yeah. Right. So it's almost like, he's like, you know, shutting it down. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, um, so like there is, there's obviously promise there. Um, but yeah. I would have to ask him uh, again yeah, if sure. like, that's something if he was on here to kind of listen um, because it's good for everyone as well right to and and, and you guys I say you know all the time listen back at your own calls um, we're our own biggest critique right we hate hearing <laughs> ourselves we hate um, or not hate is a strong word but we you know we don't care to listen to our own voices um, and Again, we're, we're going to be able to spot out, you know, for ourselves, you know, what we're doing on those calls. You can easily hear it sometimes what we're doing. Like, oh, man, I'm just like rushing this phone call. I need to slow down a bit. Right. So I do 100 percent encourage all you guys to listen to your calls. Um, and that's the benefit of using the dialer in the system, right, is that you have that capability of doing it. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I learn a lot from my calls, even if you just play back. Um, just mm -hmm. because there's some things that at that time you might not have touched and now you kind of are hearing it at a different mindset. And uh, yeah, like it's, it's, it's different when you're like on where you're on and you have to be really on top of everything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you get to really, you know, really get to build your scripts properly out that way. Um, but yeah, I think yeah. the most important thing is obviously like just building a relationship and before getting right into it is just kind of disarming them and just kind of like, you know, letting them know who you are, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think that's the hardest part because once someone answers, we're always like, oh my God, what do I say, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> that's why practicing is really important prior to because, um, you know, you can't expect like, you know, even um, so someone who's uh, an athlete, they don't just show up at the game and hope for the best. They practice, practice, practice before so that, mm -hmm. you know, you guys are all spending, you know, money on leads that you want to make sure everyone counts, right? Mm -hmm. So I get oh, that. Yeah. 
Um, so just before I go into my thing, uh, how's everyone's doing on their calls? Is there anything or any objections that you guys have, um, you know, kind of, um, received or need more improvement on, or, you know, any wins, yeah. any good conversations that you had that you noticed that maybe you tried a different approach and the results, um, of that different approach, you know, came to the, uh, you know, the, a different conversation than what you would normally think you would have with those individuals. Um, yeah. Wins can be anything. It doesn't mean just getting to a show. It could just be just having yeah. a really great confident conversation that you feel great about. Uh, yeah. I can go with one of my wins. Um, I find that uh, in the last two weeks, a lot of the leads have started to become more active, meaning that they're reaching out through my, you know, campaigns. And they're also like messaging regarding which properties I've been getting actually phone calls from random numbers saying, Hey, I want to go see this house. So that's pretty good. Um, so that's what I'm experiencing. Um, but, you know, I want to know what else you guys are experiencing. Because at the end of the day, you guys are all here to you're taking the time out of, you know, the hour out of the day to kind of learn more about, you know, what's kind of going on and how to improve your game as a real estate agent through agent locator. So remember, I already know the sauce. My sauce is working. I'm trying to help you guys build your sauce, but it only works when you guys are, uh, you know, really um, engaging, to be honest. Mm -hmm. When you guys, you guys can use the chat, the Q and A. Raise your hand if you feel like your question is uh, better verbalized. Mm -hmm. um, now, one thing that I that came up uh, with somebody while well, we're waiting for anyone to kind of provide some input, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to encounter this. Uh, you know, whether it's right now you're already encountering it, have encountered it, or will encounter it, um, is being busy and still having your database. So, you know, just speaking to some, you know, like individuals you know and yesterday there was one he's like you know i'm not spending as much time in here because i'm so busy right now with showing my buyers and my listings and what have you so i'm kind of falling behind in here um and he's not consistent he's admitting that he's not consistent right um so what do you do personally um for yourself as you start to the momentum starts to pick up um, and you find yourself kind of like away from your desk more often, how are you holding yourself accountable to ensure that every day you're working, you know, however long it is in your system um, to ensure that that momentum keeps going? Because again, you guys, if you're busy and you're on showings, you have these, you know, clients on the go, you know, that's fantastic, but we want to keep that momentum going, right? We don't want it to just also come to a complete stop once they've all transacted. Right. So how, Nick, what are you doing for yourself on a day to day basis to ensure that you are you know, making that time to to work your database? Yeah. So I think this one's a hard one for any real estate agent. It's really hard for myself. I feel that I drop off as well, too. But what I do to make sure that I'm not dropping off as much is, you know, use automatic campaigns, right? Like, so if you know that you're going to be busy in the next month, or you're not going to have time, sit down for two hours, create, you know, like a, a few different campaigns, one could be just someone who is been in your database, just looking, and it doesn't have to be messaging them every day, it could be just once a week, of something, hey, you know, hey, there, it's Nick, uh, hope everything is doing a uh, whole ball as well. Uh, I see that you're looking at homes in this has anything changed in your criteria? If so, let me know. And then if you get an email back, right, like, then you can just respond to them and kind of engage with them that way. Um, you know, if there's newer leads coming in and you don't have a welcoming campaign, you know, I would really build that out for, you know, the first 30 days. Um, so at least that when you're not calling, you know, there's other things working in the background. We live in an age where technology is, you know, our friend and also our enemy, but also our friend right now so that we can really plan out. I think you really need to sit down and kind of plan out how people are coming online and how you want to respond to them and how you can make automatic campaigns that don't sound like a robot, but they sound genuine, like you would be messaging them. And a great way that I learned from this is Go back to some of your messages, even six months, a year ago, if you guys are new, then, you know, your, your last couple ones. But if you've been with us for a while, I would look back at your six months uh, uh, to a year where you actually sat and texted or emailed people and see what that looked like and see what kind of response you have. Because that, if you're getting responses from those sit down where you're manually reading or you're writing them and they're responding, those are really great opportunities to put them in your online campaign campaign and kind mm -hmm. of shorten that and make it short and sweet. Um 
you know, so to answer your question, like it's more so just picking one or two days, no matter how busy you are to call for an hour, at least, um, you know, two even better, but at least an hour, at least touching the people that just came onto your website or people that's been active and been pretty motivated. And you can see that they're motivated if they're, you know, liking stuff on your pro profile or their, their listings, you know, always looking online, you know, engaging with you, obviously sending you emails about, oh, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm not looking for. Those are the ones that I would try to hit first. But generally, I would always try to hit the newer ones at least first, um, because the other people already know who you are, right? So yeah. that's what I would do, personally. And that's what it has helped me. Um, and you, you guys know, do like have the app now too, right? So even if you are on the go, um, and maybe you're waiting for a client, or maybe you're in between appointments, whatever it is, and you're sitting in your car, or you're at a coffee shop or wherever you are, you have the app, right? So you can still sit there to open up the app and, you know, look through your database, look through any responses, call them, text them, you know, so being at your desk can't, it shouldn't be, an, not being at your desk shouldn't always be an excuse because um, now you have a reason to, or an ability to do it away from your desk. Um, but also even like I say, like, even if you have 15 minutes, Right, That's 15 all. minutes is better than no minutes, right? If you 100%. can make two calls, is better than no calls, right? 100%. So, um, you know, is is always trying to make sure you're, you know, doing something on a daily yes. basis, right? And then Some I days, find... you know, like Nick says, you know, spend an hour in there. If you can do that, 100%, do that, catch up. Um, that way, you're not like grasping down the road um but as long as you're kind of doing something every single day you're going to keep that momentum going and you're going to not feel the struggle of falling further and further behind right and like busy this is what busy is if you're not at this level of busy you have time busy is you have phone appointments already booked during the day you have a cma done that you have to do in the morning afternoon or like evening you're taking out showing age you're taking out your clients to do showing and you're writing offers if that's all you're doing all day then you're busy but if you're just mm -hmm. kind of not doing that you're making excuses to be honest with mm -hmm. yourself i'm at a point where i'm literally on back to back to back to back to back appointments and anytime that i have even 45 minutes to myself i find that everyone just starts you know certain leads just start calling me and like i just get lost in you know all the lead gen and all that kind of stuff but you should still be if you're not doing that you definitely should be able to do at least a half an hour to an hour and mm -hmm. like crystal said like you know, even calling, even try to make, an, a, you know, five, five phone calls in the day. But the best part is, is once you start getting some success, you're going to want to do the sixth call, the seventh call, the eighth call, the ninth call and the 10th call. And then it'll just keep yeah. going. Yeah. Um, remember, like if you're nervous to do it, you should go, you should call the phone right away. Just yeah. because, you know, if you're nervous, that means that you're pro procrastinating and you're causing yourself pain because if you mm -hmm. are spending all this money, you need to make sure that you get your money back and you're getting your money back is calling, facilitate and reaching out to more clients to prospect more, to get clients to work with you and then in turn, get a payday. Mm hmm. Right. So just to go to answer um, some of the questions here, like Ali, uh, Ali over here, um, you know, hi, Nick, if you want to increase your budget to increase lead volumes, do you recommend they they increase in budget in their existing areas or new areas or a mix? I think that it's always good to get a couple different areas. Like, let's say if you have a budget of a thousand, fifteen hundred, let's say, I think it's good to have you know, one in your main area that you want to be in. So in my experience, like I want to be in Clarington, right? So I would put like five or 600 bucks in Clarington. Then I would do Oshawa as that's next to us. And then Whippy. That's what I would do in my scenario. If you're in Whippy, let's say, maybe you do Pickering Ajax and then add Oshawa. Um, mm -hmm. Or you just do Whippy, Uxbridge, Scugog. Like it really just depends on where you want to do more business and where you want to be more prominent in. Because remember, you being a, you going into, let's say if you're in Whippy and you're doing deals all of outside of Whippy, people won't really know you in Whippy, right? Yeah. So you have to really think about if you want to gain market share is to really go hard in that area, start getting more listings, start doing more buyer posts in those areas. So you can, so people who are local can start seeing you. And if you don't have social media now, and you're not really, you know, using it as a tool to kind of build relationships, get free exposure and all that stuff, then you're really shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. But so to ask, so Ali, I would just do uh, more in the main area you want to be and then expand in other areas because you're also going to capture a wider net. So you're going to capture yeah. more people. And I was going to say closest to home or your office, because those again, you know, and how Nick um, and how kind of you like commute time is one thing, right? Time is money. So Definitely. if we're having a drive an hour and a half for every show we're going to, that's not ideal. Um, 
but it also comes down to, you know, how Nick, you, you always encourage is that knowledge of your market. Yes. If you are pushing yourself, let's say I'm a Oshawa Asian and I'm like, I'm going to target Hamilton, right? My knowledge in that market is, is not the, the greatest unless I'm sitting there studying that. But also again, I'm like who wants to drive three hours to go to a showing in an area that you can't properly advise somebody on. Right. So, 100%. Um, so keeping that into consideration as well as the areas you know best, um, because that that knowledge is power, and then yep. your commute times as well, because your time yep. is money. When we're having to go and do showings, do we want to get to our show, first showing within a thirty minute window, or do we want to get there within an hour and a half window? Right. And the best thing about being local or like 15, 20 minutes away or wherever, the best thing is, is you can fit more appointments during your day. So you'll get more done rather than going to one place for half mm -hmm. your day. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it mm -hmm. takes out a lot of time. Maybe you have to do showings with one or two people in the, in your local area. That'll probably take you an hour, hour and a half. Then you can come back. Guess what? Instead, you're not traveling for half the day. Now you can come back and make some calls or follow up with hotter leads mm -hmm. or, you know, book more appointments or to get your CMAs ready or whatever, whatever. Right. Yeah. So it's really good to start with your local market and plus if you know the best business is to do it locally because you're going to be out there like for example mm. for me clarington i'm out in clarington all the time people see who i am you know i'm i'm very prominent on social media um you know wherever i'm going i'm documenting what i'm doing so that people who are local are seeing what i'm doing and then when they come to my account they're going to see oh he's local he's a local realtor he sells he buys you know he gives back like mm -hmm. people like that people don't if your profile is just you know, buy and sell, buy and sell, list and sell, like people, there's no relationship and there's no engagement on that end. They're going to just say, cool, it just, the, the, he's a transactional, he or she is a transactional agent. So, you know, we live in a world where now like anything, you can connect with anyone and you can showcase anything to anyone very easily through social media now. So I think, you know, that's a really great tool that everyone should start using. And then I'll, yeah. I'm going to go, instead of doing live dials today, um, I'm going to talk about more so on how you can get, you know, using your nosy neighbor and list like, you know, listing search, how to get more people in your social media kind of stuff, because I do my live dials, you know, if no one's going to share their calls, everyone knows my scripts, I don't, you know, I come in so many different ways that I want to try to give different values. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously, we'll go back to the live dials the next time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I want someone to share their call. Like, I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, like, you know, mm -hmm. like I say all the time, I don't need to do this. I'm doing this because yeah. I want to get back. And if no one's going to be engaging, then why am I doing this? Why am I wasting an hour taking care of people, right? That don't even want to really engage. You're, you, when you go to a gym or when you do martial arts, are you not on the floor doing your, you know, whatever your flows or, you know, your, your combos or whatever? You're doing that to gain, right? And you guys are all mm -hmm. spending money every single month, every single day to get leads. And if you guys are on here, then you guys should be doing everything properly. But if you're not, then you're on here yeah. learning and trying to figure it out, right? Yeah, so, no, absolutely. So, so this have, new, sorry, yeah, you're going to yeah, go. Yeah, there's this going with like what other people have commented here. Um, so Simone is, tells her, like I was just saying, how she holds herself accountable is by alerts yes. within her own schedule calendar, right? So oh. she's scheduled time in her calendar specifically to do things that will send her to and holding yourself accountable. So that's one thing um, that a lot of us can do is we can time block in our calendars and do things. It's holding ourselves accountable to those time blocks and saying, Nope, I block myself for this. This is what I have to be doing. So it's great if you're able to do that, but it's also kind of like going to the gym, right? You hold yourself accountable to show up every day. Um, no one's going to drag you and drop you off and force you in the building. Uh, Yes. Dragon, yeah, I'm going to go with Vishnu because I have, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, Crystal. Yeah. Um, so I have one here. So with one objections, I prefer not to be contacted. I will reach out when you're ready. So I'm going to share mm -hmm. uh, a lead that came in on my end yeah. okay. over here. So you can see this, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Nick, uh, I work uh, nights. Um, so I'm unfortunately, you know, I'm terrible at getting back. We aren't able to purchase right now. I just enjoy looking. I love seeing your properties, opportunities. When I'm ready, I'll definitely reach out in a few years still. Thank you for sending me beautiful properties to look at how to have a wonderful day. So most people would have just said, okay, thank you, right? So this is how you get answers back and be engaging still. So I go, good morning, Amanda, no worries. I totally understand. Let me know if you want me to change or alter the criteria. I can make some changes. Also, if you need assistance getting pre-approved, I have lenders that are ready to help. Have an awesome day. Thank you. We'd love to see more basement apartments. That would be amazing. Thank you. Do you see how like, 
you know, she's engaging now. So now as I con continue to engage and, and update her search criteria, now that, you know, she's going to be looking at more homes, I'm going to check in a few times, a, you know, once a week or once every two weeks, just to see if she wants to get pre-approved and learn more that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if someone's basically saying, so to summarize, if someone's saying, hey, you know, I'll reach out. Okay, no problem. I appreciate that. But in the meantime, you know, I see that you're looking at whatever, right? Like, let's say in this scenario, she's looking at Clarington's, you know, all types of home under 800K, let's say. So, hey, I see you are looking at homes in Clarington, you know, um, which are attached semis and detaches under 800K. Are you only looking for three, three bedrooms and two bathrooms minimum, question mark? And if she's biting back or he or she's biting back, then that means they're engaged. And then now you're one step further than, you know, hey, I'll reach out to you when I'm ready, you know? So I think the problem is, is learning how to engage. And if you don't know how to yeah. engage, think about this. You have to come, if, if someone's like that, just come through a customer service role where it's like, okay, no problem. I totally understand. But how are the properties I'm sending you? And then, and then start figuring it out for them. Oh, I see that you're looking at homes in this city. Okay. Is there something specific that you're looking for? Question mark. See if they answer. Right. And if they do, now you're coming back and forth with the conversation because maybe they don't want to have a phone call because they prefer to be text messaged. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would handle that situation. Yeah. Um, after the lead to register, are there any types of text message that you can recommend? I think at the end of the day, it's just really depending on what you want to do. I think, you know, there's already an automatic one that comes out, you know, within five or 10 minutes after agent locator, uh, after they come in through, through the campaigns. And then at that point, it's more so of like, how do you want their experience to be? Mm-hmm. Right. Like there's no right or wrong text message. How do you want your experience to be? I think at the end of the day, the best part is to ask them questions. The best scripts are asking them questions about what they're looking at, because when you're when you're doing that, you're building value with what they're looking at. And when someone wants something, they're going to be more amped to answer you and respond rather than something that they're not answering or like they're not caring about. Right. Yeah. So, you know, um, that's what I would do. I would basically say, Hey, you know, thanks so much for, you know, following up. Uh, thanks so much for coming onto our website. Just want to make sure you have a great user experience. You know, I see that you're looking at homes in blank, you know, are, would, are you open to uh, viewing other, uh, are you open to having, sorry, are you open to looking in other areas or you're just considering this area? Just simple, simple questions. Yes. And no questions. Okay. Like, you know, and then once you figure it out, okay, yes, I am. Oh, okay, what other areas are you looking for? And then you start naming it. You got to start mm -hmm. figuring the pieces together. Oh, yeah. okay, so you're interested in Oshawa. Would that mean you consider Clarington and Whitby or would you consider other areas other than those? Yeah. And then as you're going back and forth, right, that's where you build a relationship. That's where they, you know, they're motivated um, to continue and, and kind of giving you that valuable information that they're looking for so that you can piece the puzzle for them and then start sending them information. The whole goal yeah. with someone coming in is, you know, obviously to get them out, but it doesn't work like that. But what the whole yeah. goal is to make sure that you connect with them. They know who you are and you fact find and ask questions and then send them listings that they want, which will bring them value. And in turn, you follow up with them. Yeah. Asking the best WRH questions. Who and how, I guess. Yes. What, who, what, who, what, where, where, how, <laughs> when, yeah. So I, I, like I said, I have online, uh, like I created my online campaign, so I have automatic messages coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that's but I think like open ended questions as well as a great, you know, a way of approach as well. If you're shooting people. So one of the things as well is pay attention to this. So the more you're in your system, the more you're going to be paying attention to the things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So if you're going in and let's say this is somebody that you, you spoke to or you're trying to and you're to get a hold of them, you're just sending them one off text messages, pay attention to what you're sending and what the response rate is. Right. Are people responding to this the way I'm kind of wording this? Okay, let me tweak my campaign to automatically include this for the new leads that are coming in because people seem to be responsive to to the message when I communicate this way. Let me just adjust this there. So it's always kind of being in tune with what it is that you're doing um, while we're really just trying to get a lead to respond to us in the first place. It's so true. And getting information. 
and getting the information that we need to better assist them. Yeah, exactly. But I feel that right away, depending on the lead, most leads are going to be closed. So, you know, you just want to ask simple questions. You don't want to go so into like, are you pre-approved? Blah, 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 blah. No, you want to find out common ground. So, hey, you want to find out areas. Once you find out areas, you want to find out if they would consider other areas. If they would, great, find them out. Then at that point, ask what kind of product that they're looking for you know, what is important to you in your next house, like really ask them questions about that. Because the more someone communicates with you and opens up, the more they're going to build a relationship. And then, you know, as you build relationship with the right questions, you build trust. And then once trust comes and you send them the right products through the email, you know, through their search criteria, that's when, you know, you build value. And once you build value, everything starts coming together and then they'll reach out to you. Obviously you still have to, you know, be on top of them, not like super on top of them, but you know, mm -hmm. follow up with them, check in with them. And once they find something, you know, they'll reach out to you. You have to understand that everyone is in different places in their life, just because they're looking now or coming onto your website, they're just probably curious, you know, maybe they had some changes in the, in their lifestyle or workplace or whatever that now that, you know, making a move might make sense for them in the near future. So you have to just keep that in mind. And I know mm -hmm. that that um i know that like you know we're all worried about paydays we're all worried about on to the next deal but you know when you have a fearful mindset and it and it happens right because like it happens to me it happens to everyone it doesn't matter or you want to crush your goals or whatever whatever you know the more that you you kind of feel that pressure on yourself you're projecting that on other people so if you're just cool calm and chill and you know you really work on your behaviors your behaviors are not like hey you know i want to take out five people today through agent locator no your behaviors are hey i'm going to call 20 20 contacts today. Um, and I want to talk to 20 people. And I'm going to continue doing that for a whole month um, and do that five days a week. If you do that, and you reward yourself on behaviors, that's where if you do the right behaviors, the rewards are going to come through, right? So if you contact in this scenario, 20 people um, who you actually have a conversation with, um, a day and a week, that's 100. And then for in four weeks, that's 400 people you contacted. And you've done that for four or five months, there's no way you're not doing 15 deals. There's no way. There's no way. And if you're not, that means your scripting's not good. It means that you have to approach it differently. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to go into the next topic about social media. So who in here has social media for their business? You can just use the chat or come up or whatever. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. 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 So I don't know why everyone else is not having social media, because if you are not, then guess what? you are missing on a lot of opportunities and how, you know, agent locator and, you know, the tools that they provide can go hand in hand with social media is something simple like this, you know, right now, you know, obviously when you first started, you're going to make posts right now, you need to make videos. So get off your fears, get off your insecurities and start recording. Um, even if you don't record anything one day, another great way on how you can do this is on your stories, you know, because remember, you're okay. So let's go back here before I start going into more depth things. So the thing is, is on social media, it's basically like you are a channel. Think about, think about a TV show, how you tune in. That's basically what you're doing. People are tuning in to you, right? So if you're just posting and not putting any of your stories, so a post is a post where, you know, you want to just, you know, post whatever um, is important or, you know, what's happening in the market or your personal life. Like personally, if I was on social media, well, I am, but what I've been doing, if you go into my profile, I do a lot of local things. I give back locally. I showcase my personality. I showcase who I am and what I do, what hobbies. And then obviously in turn, I also post listings, sold, you know, all that fun stuff. So, you know, to start off, I would just post about, you know, um, a, any updates of the market. If you don't want to do that right away, post about maybe an event that you went to today or post about, you know, a local coffee shop that you go to and write like a nice caption or a story about, you know, why you go to that place and why it resonates with you, right? People don't want basic shit anymore. People want to know what people are doing and how they connect. And the best way with social media is you can connect in so many different ways. If you play soccer or play hockey or play whatever, you know, and you put on your story that you're just getting ready for the game or what not, you will be surprised on how many people will also comment that is in your database or that follows you or newer followers will start messaging out and be like, Oh, yeah, I'm at the game too. Or hey, you know, I didn't know you played hockey, I played hockey for 10 years, or whatever it is. That's how you build relationships. And that's how you win in social media, right? It's not about posting, hey, you know, buy, sell, sold. If you do that, dude, you're not going to get business. You're not.
You're not because people, there's no connection, right? We, the whole point of social media is to connect with others, build relationships and build authentic lasting relationships. Like being authentic, that is what social media is. So if you don't like going to football or whatever, don't put football, like be authentic to you because guess what? People know if you're faking it now. So many people know now. So, you know, a few things uh, that I would be doing as well is, you know, after you do a personal post where you're grabbing people in, Another great tool that I would do is, you know, and to build your database on Agent Locator is, you know, using the nosy neighbor campaign. So what that would look like on your story is, you know, you know, hey, hey, everyone, hope everyone is doing well. I actually have a, or, you know, I would actually start like this. Hey, hope everyone is doing well. Have you ever seen a listing or a just sold in your neighborhood and wonder what it sold for? And then when you're trying to find it, you can't find it online. Well, guess what? I got you. What I would recommend is give me a DM. I actually have a really good tool called the nosy neighbor campaign. Cause let's be real. We're all nosy <laughs> at the end of the day. And if I, if I wasn't in real estate and I saw a listing that came out or something that just sold for big dollars, guess what? I would want to know even if I was not a real estate agent. So what I want to do is I want to help you and give you that information. So DM me um, and let's talk and let me connect with you. Look how easy that was. I mean, it's easy for me because I do this every day now, but like, you know, look at what I did. I let people know that, Hey, have you sh showed a problem? Have you ever seen a listing or have you ever seen, you know, uh, a sold that sold and you didn't find the price point? Because remember they take it down. Yes. On websites. Now you can find it, but not everyone is super savvy and not everyone knows where to find it. Right. And your job is to connect that information to other people. So now guess what? Even if you have a hundred people watching it and you got two people reaching out, guess what? Oh yeah, I do. Okay. No problem. All I need is your email. Um, what is it? Okay, perfect. They'll give you your email. And then I'd be like, okay, what's your address? And then would you want it daily, monthly, or uh, daily, weekly, or monthly? And guess what? If you get two or five people that gave you their in info, guess what? Now you have them on agent locator. You send them, you know, based on how they want to be sent. And now you're building your database without spending money through your Google yeah. ads. And you're getting more leads. Yeah. I just did that yesterday. Yeah. And she has, this person has two properties. She has, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your, her owner occupied, and then she has a rental. And then guess what? She wants to buy an Airbnb. And that's just one person mm -hmm. I got referred. I got referred yesterday to another deal. Um, and uh, I put her on nosy neighbor yesterday. I'm going to do a CMA tomorrow at her house, but it builds relationships and it builds like information gathering, right? Like, you know, people are not doing it like that. And you have to understand if everyone's going this way, you've got to go the other way and find another way to stand out. Because the thing that I hate about real estate agents, I'm sorry, guys, but I hate that once one so once someone does a really good idea, everyone rinses and copies it. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no little, there's no creativity. And the only way to defend your creativity and the way that to stand out is to do things differently that other people can't do because you're being authentically you. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're gonna attract those that actually are attracted to you as a person as well right so what better clients to have of people that have similarities to you already um if we're attracting people and being a fake person and trying to put out there what we think people want to see uh, we're going to be attracting those type of people which may not be our ideal client base as well right 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 so, right um, and, and again, if you're posting things that, like you say, similarities, like, you know, if you certain sports, you're at a hockey game, whatever it is, um, if you're attracting people like that, you also have something that you can talk about that's outside of real estate to help build that relationship. Yes. Right? It's not just going to be cut and dry this, you know, talking about the business aspect of things. You're, you're again, going back into the relationship building and connecting with people um, right. that, that are better to work with. Ultimately. Exactly. Um, yeah. And then the, even going back to years, years ago, so this is probably at least five years. I've been with Agent Logan Hitter for a while, but at least five years ago, um, I spoke to one team. They were out in the like the West End. I feel like the Niagara area, somewhere around there anyway. Um, and they have their Facebook group at the time, I think had like over 5,000, five to 8,000 people that liked their page. And the one thing she said to me was, we do not, even though it was a real estate page, they do not post anything real estate related on there. Nothing, 
nothing real estate. It'll be about stuff in the community, stuff that they think people want to hear, stuff about, you know, anything but real estate. We're not advertising our listings or anything on there. People don't want to see that, right? They want, you know, they want to look at funny things or watch funny reels or see what's going on or, you know, whatever it might be. And so that's why they've built such a big following is because it's almost like a, a feed of information of a variety of different things that they find entertaining. Right. Right. But right. they get a lot of business from it because it's a real estate team that's behind it. Right. But it also right. shows their personality as well as how they're connected to the community and connected to their audience. Right. And another way to like really consider this, look, you post a detached house in let's say Oshawa. Okay. There's only so many people that are going to want to see that post. But if you post about you and your family about doing something for the day, how much more of a wider net, sorry, how much more of a wider net are you going to get, right? You're not going to just get a detached house. You're going to get people who are very similar to you and who value family and really enjoy your days that you do with them. And guess what? That's building authentic conversations. Hey, I saw that, you know, your dog is so cute. Oh my God, no problem. You know, thank you so much. You know, she's a pain sometimes. Do you have any pets? Right. And then yeah. you start building a relationship that way. So many people don't know how to just like have a conversation with people. And you know what, what I would do is I would practice. I would literally go outside if I was scared to talk to people, which I was, believe it or not, I was an in introvert believe it or not, like I still am sometimes, <laughs> I still get nervous, but I've masked it so well because I, I just enjoy actually getting to know people. So, you know, even when you're walking down the streets, if you see, you know, someone, you know, that has, that's all put together nice, or maybe they just walked out of your favorite coffee shop, like have a quick conversation. Hey, yeah. I, I'm actually just going to Rome. What did you order? Oh, I, you ordered a cappuccino? No way. I get the same things. How long have you been there? And then like, you don't have to like oh. talk their ear off, but just like quick little like, you know, Timbits and be like, hey, yeah, have a great day. And then you're just building yeah. relationships. So if you run into them next time, guess what? They get to know who you are, right? So- yeah. Um, or if someone, you know, is like a guy is all kind of put together nice, like, you know, just be like, hey, love your blazer or whatever, right? Like, yeah. you know, just get into the habit of communicating with other people and being nervous of breaking the ice. Because as yeah. you start, you know, being nervous and as you start breaking those ice, you know, you start getting more confident. And then guess what? These phone calls that you're doing is not that bad because guess what? You're not in front of them. You're not like, they don't know who you look like as of yet. And it's not as bad as being mm -hmm. there having conversations, seeing reactions, learning how to do whatever, right? So I think that mm -hmm. that's something that people need to really, you know, break the ice more of, um, because that's only going to help you get better. Um, I'm a big believer of whatever you don't like, do it more. Mm -hmm. Because that is what's going to get you more success and grow your skills to such a better way of complementing the way that you do your business, right? That's mm -hmm. what it's about. At the end of the day, we, you know, business owners and like it's it's like this too you're you're a person that goes to the gym guess what how come so many people stick to what they know which is arms and chest and like shoulders Basically, but people yeah. don't work out their legs or their back or mm -hmm. like right mm -hmm. so what i'm trying to say is that people only want to work on their strengths that's just like business owners business owners always want to just work on their strengths what they're good at but how to build a, a, a really successful business is also a, okay you know what you're good at but also knowing what you're weak at and working on those and then if you can't do it you find a way to get someone to do those things so that you look seamless all way all uh, all around right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know even another idea if you're going to go on your stories is post about hey you know, um, if you're in Pickering, guess what? Right now, there's been 15 new listings that came out on the market. And in total, there's about 110 listings available on the market. So if you're looking for a house in in, uh, in Pickering, I would love to send you a list just to showcase what's available. I'm not going to be annoying. I'm not going to harass you. But I want to give you that information. Let me know and DM me what, what you're interested in. You know, like simple things like that. We'll start getting you people. Guess what? If someone wants to come online and look at homes in, in Pickering, guess what? Now I'm going to manually add them on agent locator and I'm going to set them up as a criteria and then I'm going to follow up that way. So that's another great way of like, you know, using the system to your advantage and not paying for more leads if you are frugal on a budget. So, yeah. I mean, you know, there's so many ways. There's so many ways of doing things. It's just finding solutions. Yeah. Right. I and it could even be hard. just going into your community, and I know some will do this or have done this, and it's showcasing a small businesses in the neighborhood. Like you went to like a little coffee shop, right? So here exactly. today, whatever, I just had their featured whatever, whatever latte, like you guys have to come down here and try this. 
Yeah. yeah let them know that Nick sent me. Like, right. you know. Or or what you could do too is if you have, if you're already building relationships and you've been DMing someone for a couple of weeks, invite them out. Hey, I'm going to be at Rome uh, or sorry, I'm going to be at this coffee shop, you know, next Tuesday. Are you available? I'd love to actually meet you in person, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, no, I don't do any Treb. I, if you guys are on Treb, you guys are like way dated. And I'll tell you why, because Treb only limits you to 200 leads. Mm -hmm. I have 5,000 people, right? And agent locator also what they do differently is you can see how many times someone looked at the property, what they viewed and like their criteria that they're searching and they can change stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Where in Treb, you can't see that. No, so you remember, have no idea. What yeah, doing so, with what you're doing for them. Exactly. So remember, you want to be a ninja and a ninja is kind of knowing what's happening, but not exploiting it so that when you talk to them, be like, oh, hey, by the way, I saw one, two, three Main Street, um, you know, based on your criteria, I think that's a really good listing. Have you seen it? Oh, my God. Yeah, I have. I love that property. You actually really know what we're looking for. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So information is your your friend and and more information you have about that person the more opportunity that you have to showcase what they want build value build a relationship and in turn you know obviously help them get the next house or sell their house or do both and really if, if you're using and like i know treb is one of them i'm not sure but most systems i imagine are very similar um is you've got to keep renewing those searches every 90 days whereas yes. agent locator you can be with agent locator for 10 years yes and those people's searches have not stopped unless they've stopped them themselves they're at the very least still getting an email from you every month with the listings of their original criteria right exactly. which again you can turn back on so um, i know in some of the past sessions um i think with tara um she went through her entire database from like the last page from people where she knows they haven't been active and turn their search back on to daily. And just by doing that, how many people have started to become more active again, because now they're more frequently getting the listings, right? Yes. So um, there's a huge benefit to that. Um, again, and, and knowing who's looking at what, what you're sending them is, is super valuable, right? Because if we're going in blind, we're spending time potentially following up with people that aren't even actioning any of our efforts. Right. Whereas we could be, you know, and we're forgetting about or not even paying attention to the people that keep opening up every single email we're sending or every listing that we're, we're sending, they're taking a look at. Right. So it's a huge advantage to be using the, the agent locator platform when it comes to the visibility of, of your lead behaviors. I totally agree with you, to be honest. Um, have you guys heard about AI to follow up and book appointments for you? Um, I tried the AI here. It's it's good. Um, but I think it depends on your comfortability level and how much you want to trust, you know, AI at this point, right? Um, mm -hmm. It does definitely help. Um, the Some of the conversations I've had, they, de they have converted. Um, but uh, I'm a little bit of a control freak. So I like to make sure that I know what is being said and then have manual answers because the way that I want to say things... Um, and how they, I want to express them is not going to be the same way, right? But if you're newer mm -hmm. and you don't know how to deal with objections or deal with certain answers, this is a great start to just kind of seeing what's out there and doing that kind of stuff. Um, and drag, uh, Draga, I would definitely start breaking that habit. Um, I'm telling you, um, Agent Locator's CRM is definitely the best or one of the best CRMs, especially with all the tools that they provide. Like, which other one can you put them on nosy neighbor, like on sold listings, which other ones can you, you know, like Crystal was saying, just keep them on the search, um, you know, seeing what they're looking at in a really nice and clean, um, you know, kind of database, you know, the system, it, it, the CRM is really clean. So, I mean, it's, it's really, really good. So, I mean, I feel that a lot of people want to, you know, break the system because I'm definitely one of them, but remember, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You want to use the wheel and figure out other ways to get the wheel to run faster without you putting as much effort into it yeah there is ai in place on agent locator it really depends on what platform and plan that you are on yes um and this in the ai basically is if a lead replies the ai kind of responds on your behalf and tries to help pre-qualify as to motivation you know any additional uh criteria that this person may be looking for um we are also in the process of um, searching for other AI providers as well, um, so more robust. There's so much stuff coming out there with respect yes. to AI, right? And having more, you know, whether it's more control or cost or, um, you know, being a true AI, right? you know, with our AI, I find like it's 
it's good in the sense it's going to get you what you what you want uh, with respect to the information about a lead. Um, is it adapting to how people are responding to questions, or is it just kind of taking keywords and and giving kind of like you know I find like if you put it in lamest terms, I don't find it as like what we would consider an AI where it's constantly learning and adapting. It's yeah. AI where it already knows based on different keyword sequences, things like that, what it should be saying right. um, or asking, right? So again, it's great. A lot of people love it. Um, it helps them. It helps to pre-qualify. A lot of leads will engage not knowing that it's a bot that they're talking to. Um, and, you know, and again, then there's some people who is like Nick, who, you know, didn't necessarily see anything wrong with it. It's just he wants to be in control of what's actually being said. Yeah, so. I'm crazy. <laughs> 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 you know, um, but if people want to come up, let's come up for the last 15 minutes and uh, kind of figure out some solutions here for everyone. Yeah. So uh, I know that some of you guys had your hands up before. So if you don't want to come up, just stick your hand down. Um, anyone that does want to come up, you know, keep it up there. Um, so I feel like we've got uh, Benita. We'll let Benita talk. Benina, you are on the floor. You just have to unmute yourself if you are wanting to have or have a question to ask, comment, or. Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah, we'll go to Martaza. Uh, yeah, hi. So How are you? I just had a question, uh, just had a comment regarding AI. Uh, I found that it is not uh, sort of geared to my needs and what I would uh, normally say. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I guess it's still learning. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But the other question I had was in terms of, uh, you know, uh, how do we flag somebody like a lot of my leads, I, uh, they say, you know, uh, we are going to uh, contact us in June, for example, mm -hmm. right? And what I find in Easy Locator is uh, that it is relevant, uh, like in terms of, uh, sorry, it is relative, like, you know, contact in two weeks or contact in one month or contact mm -hmm. after three weeks. But yeah. is there anything in there that would sort of, uh, uh, I would be able to pull up all those where they say, you know, contact them in May, for example. And you could if you were using tags uh, for that. Right. So okay. if there is like if you created like like a monthly tag, like, you know, January, February, March, April, May, that way, if if you have like a follow up May tag, for example, you can pull up everyone that you said you would follow up with them in May. Um, and just keep in mind when people say, you know, whatever they're telling you to follow up with them, kind of obviously follow up a bit sooner than that. Um, yeah, often what our leads. Yeah. Often our leads will tell us one thing and that. You know, mm -hmm. not their exact, you know, when they want you to, they want to be starting to look at that time and we might be one month too late on those. Right. Things. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so this okay. is the other thing too, is, you know, another thing that I do, you guys got to challenge people, like not roughly or rude or anything, but mm -hmm. you know, Amortaz, no problem. I understand that you want me to reach out in May, but if you don't want me, a if you don't mind me asking, what's going to be different in May than compared to now? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So give me some, give me some objections. Like, let me just run with it. Uh, I'm traveling right now. Okay. Nice. Where are you traveling to? Portugal. Portugal. That's awesome. Do you have family there? Yep. Nice. Are you staying with like, I'm Italian, right? So when I go there, I usually stay with my family. Are you doing the same? Yeah, probably. Nice. How long are you staying there for? Uh, I'll be gone for about three weeks. Nice, nice. All right. Well, hey, man, I totally understand. I hope you have a great time down there. But in the meantime, can I just get a better idea of what you're searching for so that when you come back, you already can catch up or when you're there, you know, kind of like just waiting for your plane or whatever, whatever, at least I can showcase and show you some value. So when you come back, it looks like you're not missing a beat. Um, so are you're just looking at detached houses. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So do you see how I just moved it, though? Do you see how mm -hmm. at first I built the relationship? 
kind of engaged on where they're going. And then at that point, you know, I like gave my own personal experience, um, you know, and you could ask questions like, is there a, a specific spot that you're looking to go to? You know, I hear Portugal is beautiful. How many times have you been there? Is this your first time? Like, you know, you just have to really mm-hmm. engage and treat it like a, an actual person. And then from there, you know, brought it back saying, hey, you know what? I totally understand you're going to be busy sightseeing and all that stuff, but I'm just going to, just so I can make sure I'm still sending you value, you know, sending you values, you know, and not missing a beat when you come back let me just get a better idea of your criteria. Are you just looking at this? Like, you know, and then you start a- a- answering questions and guess what? You know, you're going to know if they're bullshitting you from like mm-hmm. actually engaging with them. All right. Right. Yeah. And then if you, and then let's say like, Oh, like it sounds like, uh, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Hey Martez, it sounds like you're, you know, it, you, you may not be going on this trip because I know when I'm booking stuff, I kind of know where I'm going to go and how I want to do it. And, you know, mm-hmm. just to let you know, you know, I'm not here to harass you in any means or form. You know, there's so many real estate agents that don't know how to take care and set people up to find the best properties for themselves. So, Hey, mm-hmm. you know, I understand if you feel that, you know, I'm kind of uh, intimidating at this time. I'm not, I'm, I'm super friendly like you are. Um, and I just want to make sure that I'm sending you things so that I can make sure that, you know, when you're searching these homes, I actually send you things that you do want to see, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I don't want to waste your time. And I know that you're a busy guy. Does that sound right? Right. You know what I'm saying? So you just have to have fun with it. And like, honestly, Mm -hmm. like, you know, you can't come like, you can't come super aggressive. You have to come super chill. But like how Mm -hmm. I do my business is I'm always taking one small step forward, one small step forward, one stall, you know, that's how I lead Jen. Because if you go, Mm -hmm. if you just walk right in, they're going to shut the door on you. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So mm-hmm. those are the things that I would do. Other things too, is that if you know that people are trying to get you to call back at a certain time, why don't you set back, why don't you set an online campaign for just maybe one or two messages that you can mm-hmm. set um, for that timeline. So then at least that time, you know, you're already reaching out to them. They're like, wow, this person remembered that I'm back. Wow. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And your legion is like, that's why it's hard to to do an online campaign with certain things like that, you can make different variations, but like in this case, someone's coming back from vacation or let's say in another case, someone, you know, is getting out of the hospital, right? Like there's certain variations that you can make that, you know, at least when they come in or whatever, they tell you, you can set them up automatically. (laughs) Sorry. But yeah. So that's what I I would say. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Yeah. My pleasure. My pleasure. Happy selling. All right, let's bring uh, was Ali on here. Let's bring Ali up. Okay. Hey. Hi, Nick. Good hey. afternoon. Good morning, What's guys. Up, buddy? Um, I had a two-part question, Nick, uh, around budget. At one of the seminars you mentioned, sometimes you go, quote-unquote, crazy, and you would raise it to $5,000 temporarily and then switch it back down. Uh, so one question was, how do you decide and at what point do you, do you gauge that now is the time to press the pedal? That's one question. Um, secondly, for someone who is experienced, who's had a, a lot of deals in the, in, the, in the database, in the non-Google world, uh, and is ready to take on a lot more leads, et cetera, what do you think is, is a good, decent budget where you could you know, have the possibility of scoring a, a good 15, 20 deals a year? From agent locator, I know that would depend a lot on the skill set and and follow up uh, sequences, etc. But budget wise, what do you think is a is, is a solid uh, you know pressing the pedal uh, uh, category budget? Thank you. Yeah. So right now, um, especially if you're in German region, um, I'm sure that you're seeing that there's a lot more competition happening. I'm seeing 53 offers. I'm seeing 20. I'm seeing 16 on listings. Um, and I'm seeing bigger sales prices right now. So to me, that's an indication that there's people out there looking to buy. So right now, when I see stuff like that, this is when I would uh, put my budget up a lot, like a thousand fifteen hundred at least for right now. You don't want to go five grand if you haven't started this, but I would start a thousand fifteen hundred if you have a decent budget, because at the end of the day, you're going to have so many more people coming into your store, and then you're going to be practicing and trying to get you know that information and try to convert. Um, also. The high budget doesn't mean that you're going to do more deals. It just means that more people are going to come through, but you know, you want to set your, your schedule and your systems right properly. And you don't want to overload them. Right. If you have your, like, I would definitely start with a thousand fifteen hundred because then you can start, you know, greasing your systems and kind of seeing where you're, where the problems are, what, what campaigns you need to make, whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever, because then that way, once you have it all seamlessly and everything's working by itself, then you can add more money, but also if you're out and you're super busy every single day and you're not really calling these leads, I wouldn't be putting your budget super high, right? Because mm-hmm. you, 
you know, someone, someone that does a thousand compared to $3,000 a month, the thousand dollar, uh, you know, ad spend with that agent could do more deals than the person spending 3000, because guess what they're, you know, they're growing and they're building that relationship with those eight, with those uh, leads that are coming in, um, and building more of an engagement, which in turn will get them more money compared to spending 3000 casting a wide net and just bringing it in and seeing what you get. Mm -hmm. So I think it comes down to, understanding your systems, what your threshold of being overloaded at, um, and you know, what your number is and, and what you need to do with that. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. So that's what I would do. Um, and from someone that's coming from, you know, not online leads to doing online leads now, there's going to be a lot of a learning curve, but I would definitely spend around that range to get enough people coming in. And remember, the best part is, is if you feel like it's not enough, put more people in, or like put more money in. Uh, if you feel like it's too much, then bring your budget down a little bit. Remember, you just want to do this for a couple months just to get so many leads coming in and then following up with them as much as possible um, and then seeing where that takes you. Because if you, you if you do that, you'll be doing deals no problem. And remember, these deals are not three, these deals are usually three to 18 months. So you could do like, five deals this year or six deals this year and have a lot of great, you know, leads that are your nurturing. And next year you might be able to do 30, 35. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is I wouldn't like, obviously the whole point is to do deals and get your money back. Right. But I would be building relationships and I would doing, I would be doing my goals and behaviors based on how many people I'm building relationships with per week, because if you're doing that, they'll naturally come. There's so many people that I even forget to follow up with. And six months later, they're like, Hey, Nick, I'm ready. I want to go see this. I'm like, Oh shit. I totally forgot about this person. Mm -hmm. Right. But building the relationships is where people are going to circle back with you. And the best leads are leads that are like six to 12 months out because whoever's followed up has stopped following up. They stopped going on other people's websites. And since you've talked to them and you've got the value that they wanted, they didn't need to go on other websites. Mm -hmm. Right. And as long as you stay and, and keep those follow-ups going. Right. So a lot of us were so connected to and focused on the initial connection with the lead. And then we forget to, be consistent follow with up. follow ups, right? The average realtor is only going to follow up maybe two to four times, four at max. Like the average is about two. Um, so after like you've been following up for a month or two months or three, you know, three months, whatever it might be, six months, um, almost all of your competition has disappeared, right? It's just you now, right? So and you're the only person they're talking to. You're the listings. Like hey, you know, you're talking to them about that. It might be stuff outside of real estate because. You know that they're not moving anytime soon, but it's keeping that relationship going so that whether it's, you know, six months down the road, two years down the road, you've been so consistent with your follow up and staying connected that you're the first person they think of. They feel 100%. a little more, you know, leaning towards you, right? But we have to stay you know, on top of that. So as much as we might have a campaign where we're able to follow up or call all these people initially um, and have those conversations. Uh, remember that each one of them is going to require a series of follow-ups as well, whether it's every week, every month, every six months, you know, so it's, it's making sure, again, we're biting off as much as we can chew because it's going to be compounding at some point. Exactly. So just recap, like just kind of, you know, um, recapping, what was one of your aha moments in um, our class today? And what is something that you're going to do with that aha in the next few days or even today? anyone chat q a <laughs> be more yeah. human yeah that makes yeah. sense is that it out of 16 people only one ahas <laughs> nosy neighbor videos yes uh, on social videos. media yeah yes yes so let me ask you a question. What is being your authentic self? How is that going to look like? Use more social media. And if you guys need more like kind of like advice or seeing how another perspective on real estate, follow me on Moretti Real Estate because you get to see like what I'm doing, how I do my mm -hmm. stories, you know, all that kind of stuff because they'll help you give certain ideas on how to be different. And you find those certain niches that you're, that you are familiar with as well. Uh, we'll have a, we have a client here. 
Um, I don't know if he does lead gen with us. I don't know if he really needs to, but he's grown a team, but he's uh, into supercars. He's got one or two. Like he's, this guy is really great at his job and he's leveraged. Now he's got this whole group of people where originally when he had originally signed up years ago with us, he would go into the forum where all these guys are in these forums that all have supercars and they all knew him as the realtor from Calgary. That also oh, Mike Sherrard. No. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, it's Jordan. Jordan Latoski. Okay, cool. Uh, but, cool, that, cool. but that's how he, like, he kind of found that one thing that is his niche, right, that everyone kind of knew him from. But he built his database for people. He was advertising what he does for a living, but not even advertising. It's just being his authentic self into an audience where he instantly has something in common with them. Right. Right. So if you're into golf or you're into, you know, hockey or you're into gardening or whatever it is right so finding those niches in those groups or those are the people that are going to be more attracted to you and you're going to connect with if you're running ads like some of the things you can do is like daily boost right target those audiences in your area people who are interested in gardening right and then you know gardening and real estate or gardening that are in the you know durham area right so again your ads are going to be kind of focusing even if it's just something personal it doesn't have to be an ad like for real estate it could just be you know you kind of at, you know going through and sharing a gardening tip or something like that to help spruce up your home for the spring market yes. Right. So it could be stuff like that, but you're now targeting people that have that interest in gardening. Yes. Um, as well as, you know, maybe potentially looking to, to list their house. Yes. Time. So Yes. And another, so I'm going to leave with two closing remarks. Number one is remember, think about how many, how, how many people are live in Ontario. Let's say even like Durham region or whatever region you are, let's say at least five, what in total 500,000 people, let's just say. To live a good life as a real estate agent, you need to do at least 20 deals. So out of 500,000 people, you're telling me you can't find even 10 people to buy and sell with. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you perceive it that way, it's like, how can you not do it? And it's very power, powerful. Mm -hmm. The other way uh, is also too, is at the end of the day, you know, if you are in a room and you don't feel valued, you don't have to stay in that room, right? And just like how Chris was saying about supercars or whatever it is, you know, Go go to the room where you're going to feel valued and go to other people who are like minded individuals, because if you're thinking about that same stuff, guess what? I'm pretty sure that there's probably, you know, 20,000 people that are thinking very similar or more. Right. So just go where you're valued, be your authentic self, which is, you know, how to be your authentic self is, you know, obviously be some sort of like, you know, have a restriction. Don't like be too, too out there, um, you know, but, you know, give your opinions, give it nicely. Don't say like, oh, you suck. Be like, hey, you know what? I think this is a great way of doing it, but have you ever thought about it doing it this way? Because, you know, if I were you, this is how I would think about it. You know, that's how you build relationships and that's how you just be you. Yeah. Right. So, you know, the best way of being you not being you is not hard. Right. Like you've been like, I'm 33 years old. I know what Nick does. I know what Nick is like, you know, if you're older than younger, yeah. you're all the same stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think everyone could just learn from just, you know, um, for me, like what I've done is I've done spro with your bro. I have espressos all the time. So I talk about just, you know, what what's going on in my life or how I'm feeling. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, just find different ways of being creative. That's the best way of doing it so that people don't copy you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, thank, thank you for you. everyone who came yeah. through. I uh, hope you guys have a great day and uh, happy cool. selling. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Nick, as always. We'll see y'all in a couple weeks. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.